God, uh, Moses had a, a, a speech impediment in that he had slurred speech that he stuttered. And he's thinking to himself, I don't want to embarrass myself, God. I don't want to go before uh, Pharaoh and having to stutter before this man who was educated. I, I don't want to make a mockery of myself, God. And, and, and so can you send somebody else? And God looks on Moses and he says to Moses, Moses, uh, you're afraid of where you are going. Uh, you're afraid of this task that I've given you. But I want to remind you uh, who has created uh, the mouth. You're telling me what you cannot do. You tell me about the destination. But you don't know that the one who starts a work that he is faithful to finish it because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And so Moses on his journey is going. God gave him Aaron, his brother, there to be his mouthpiece, that Aaron would be speaking on behalf of Moses. But along the way, you're going to see that because Moses himself catch revelation of where he is going, he gets revelation of where he is going. God says, I'm taking you to a land. And all of a sudden, when Moses gets revelation in all that he is seeing that God is doing, he sees that God, I see all that you are doing. At some point, I'm sure he pushes his brother Aaron to the side and he tells Pharaoh himself, God said, let my people go. is corrected and we see that Moses now is going forth in the full strength of what God had him to go forth in because now he understood that the reason why he knew the way was because God was ordering his steps because God was leading him because God was with him he knew the way because the way was with him hallelujah, hallelujah. can you imagine friends that Abraham gets a word from God and God says, uh, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave your countrymen and I want you to go to a place that I will show you. And this man of God, by faith, he gets up and he begins to go. Can you imagine getting up and going and you don't have a destination? You know, for many people, I want to know all the details. And I want to know every stop along the way. God, I want to know what to expect. I want to know this and I want to know the next thing. But Bible says that this man, Abraham, he had faith in God. That God, if you say to go, I know that you will lead me and that you will get me there for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so he gets up. He doesn't know where he is going. He doesn't know which way to go of himself but Bible says that his steps were ordered by God and Abraham when he reached his destination even though he himself did not know the way that he was going but the way was with him because he was in faith the way was with him because he believed God to be with him and we see the same thing in the life of Moses, in that when, when the Lord says to Moses in the wilderness, God says, Moses, I will no longer go with you. I will send an angel with you. And Moses says, hold on, God. I tell you, it's probably one of the most beautiful pictures I've painted in, in my own thoughts when I envision Moses' interaction with God there in the wilderness when God told him that we will not, he will not tarry with them any longer. Moses says, hold on, God. He says, God, if you will not go with us, then we're not going anywhere. He says, God, if you will not go with us, then we're going to remain where you are because what sets us apart? What makes us different from every other nation? is that we have you with us. You are the difference maker, and so if you are not going with us, then we are not going anywhere. 
That is a faith that one has in God to understand that the steps of a righteous man, that they are ordered by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Jesus going back there in John 14, uh, he says to the disciples, uh, I am going to a place to prepare for you. It's good for you that I go. And he says, you know the way. And the reason why you know the way is that you know me. And if I am with you, and he goes on, you know, again, uh, not too far on, he says, if you abide in me and I also in you, that you will bear fruit, meaning that if you remain connected to me, I will order your steps. I will allow you to be fruitful. I will allow you to be prosperous in your way. He says, you know the way because you know the truth because you know Jesus. And he doesn't stop right there. He says, greater works will you even do because you have the name of Jesus. Greater works will you even do because you know me. You will do even greater works than you have seen me do. In other words, in the same way that we saw Moses demonstrate God to the children of Israel by the works that he did. There are many people who doubted Moses in the wilderness, but they could not deny the power of God in the wilderness. They doubted every step of the way. We're going to die. Can you imagine every step of the way? The people, in fact, Bible tells us that Moses reaches a certain point and God summons him there to the top of the mountain. And while he's on top of the mountain already, they have given all their gold. And they said, you know, God has abandoned us here. And so we're going to make for ourselves a God of calf, of golden calf. These people were only mindful of where they were, but they didn't have in sight the destination that God was bringing them to. Their faith only was possible for what they were able to see, but they did not believe in the words that God had given to them, the promise that he had made to them. And so there in the wilderness, they were already willing to abandon the destination that God had for them. He had already promised them, I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But yet they were still in the wilderness and they've made for himself a golden calf that they may worship in the wilderness. There are places that we go in life and we set up for ourselves enshrined in the love of things of the world and that we make it for ourselves and say, well, this is my heaven. In fact, can you imagine, the Bible even says that there are many people who have already have their heaven here on earth. They have no desire about where God wants to bring them to. For they are content and are satisfied with the gratification of the flesh. But Moses demonstrated yet again the power of God in the wilderness. And by the works that he did in the wilderness, the people believed on God. They believed not in the words of Moses, but they believed in the works that he did. And Jesus says, if you did not believe me by what I have said, but believe me in the works that I do, for it is God in me that is performing the miracles that you are able to see. That which you have witnessed with your eyes is the doing of Almighty God. And he says, so if you don't believe in what I say, believe in what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if I tell you that I am going to prepare a place for you, and you know the way because I am with you. Word of God says that he will never leave us nor will he forsake us. And a person who has accepted Jesus Christ in their hearts as their Lord and Savior, that they have embraced even the path of God 
that they have not just come to a place that they are wondering whether or not this place, this door leads to everlasting life. But we know that it leads to everlasting life. For the Son has come, and the Bible says that what Jesus was able to do, he, he, he told the, those who were there that I am not bearing witness of myself, for the Father has bore witness of me and what I have done and what I have said. They are not just of what I am saying and doing, but they are what my Father has given me the power and the authority to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus says, you know the way. You know the way. I want you to turn to someone this morning, tell them you know the way. Now again, there's a caveat to that. There's a caveat to that. If you don't know Jesus, then you don't know the way. Right? Ultimately, this is what Christ was getting at. He said, if you know the Son, then you know the way. But if you don't know the Son, then you don't know the way. You know, I've shared this here before, the story of the Father and the Son and their collections that they had. And this is not in the Bible, but this is a story that's told in this wonderful story of a father and a son who lived in the countryside. And as they lived in the countryside, they had a wonderful collection of paintings. People traveled from far, very wealthy people, and and just those who were interested in the arts to come to see the famous paintings of the time. And as they were coming, they admired and one day war broke out in the land and the son was summoned to come and fight for his country. And being a man of nobility, he went and he fought on behalf of his country and the father received the, the news that his son had died in, in battle. And the father became very grieved in himself. And, and as he was grieved, he had shut his doors and no one was able to come and just bask in the richness of the arts that he had collected with his son over the years. And until one day he received a knock at his front door and it was this young man who was holding a painting in his hands. And, and in the painting, the young man mustered up enough courage to look at the father in the face and he says that I knew your son. And your son spoke of you so highly and he spoke of the love that you guys, you guys both had for the arts. And it says, but what you don't know is that I was there with your son in the battlefield and, and I was wounded. And as I was wounded on that day, your son had already made it to safety and he looked back and he saw that I was wounded and, and so he ran back valiantly and he took me and as he was carrying me to safety, he was shot and he gave his life for mine. And all I thought is that I knew there was no way that I could repay your son, but he told me to love, and I'm not much of a, an artist, but I spent some time drawing up this painting of your son. And the father looked on the painting and he looked at the eyes and he said, you captured the very essence of my son. And the father had this smile on his face and he looked on the painting of the son. He placed it on display there in his art gallery and he reopened his doors and and others were coming and, and every time someone came, he would bypass all the famous painting. He would go to the painting of his son and he would say, wow, this is probably the most prized painting I have in my collection. And it's so on with time that the father passed away and he left in his estate and everything would be auctioned off. And the auctioneer started off the auction and he pulls out the painting of the sun. And he says, who here will bid on the painting of the sun? And the arts enthusiasts 
and those who were very wealthy and who came up that they would get a piece of this rich collection. They said, don't waste our time with that. That is of no value. And the crowd became quite belligerent, but the man says, is there anyone that would bid on the painting of the sun? And it was a man there towards the back who did not feel worthy to be in the midst of all of these wealthy people. And, but however, outside of everyone who was there in that auction, he knew how much love and affection that this father had for his son. And he knew the value that this father had placed on the painting of his son. And so the man very humbly raised his hand and said, Sir, I only have ten dollars. And the auctioneer says, is there anyone else that will bid on the painting of the sun? And the crowd is going ballistic and saying, give it to him. Don't waste our time. It has no value. The auctioneer says, go on once. Go on twice. Sold to the man in the back for $10. And then he says, ladies and gentlemen, I have to inform you that the auction is now closed. And every man is confused within themselves and they're not sure of what's going on. And so the auctioneer says that this is not something that I could disclose in the very beginning. It is only now that I can disclose to you the stipulation that the father left in his will. That whoever buys the painting of the sun gets everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever buys the painting of the sun gets what? Everything. everything that belongs to the Father. You think about it for you and I and what the Son affords us. When it comes to God, is that Whoever gets his son, whoever accepts his son, whoever accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, they don't get some things, but they get everything. everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They get everything. And it's something that many takes for granted because there is no other way. I'm sorry to tell you, whether it's Hell Selassie or whether it's Buddha or whatever you want to call it. There is no other way to get to the Father but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes people, especially out there, you have this sense that everyone wants to be politically correct. So I want to be asked politically correct as I can be. There is no other way to get to the Father but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is no other way to get to the Father but through His Son Jesus. And so He says, you know the way. To every man who has accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts as their Lord and Savior, He has given to them the very road map the very path to everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise God. Let us stand to our feet this morning. Jesus says, you know the way. You know the way. <laughs>